Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. That's because we talk the Word of God around here. Kelly's with us again today, and she's got some really good things for us. I'm excited about today. Good. Me too. I, I am expecting so many miracles, Mom. Praise God. And I want you to expect that too yes. because when you do, you go through the, the things that we've gone through the last two weeks, cleaning out your soul, turning your heart towards yes, Him. Amen. We're ready. Your, We're ready. Your chooser has been impacted these last two weeks. And if you have not joined us up to now, I really would encourage you to just hit pause on this and go back and then come back to this because um, our chooser is critical. Our soul yeah, is our critical. It's our future. The Word says um, that, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul, soul. prospers. So your soul needs to be in, prosper, in a prosperous Bible place. Bible says it needs to be renewed. It has to be renewed and, and you got to open it up to Jesus. Renew He's so wonderful in general how oh, He does oh. it. So we've talked, that's what we've talked about. But you know, we read in Jeremiah, it says, if you get tired running with mere, dealing with mere men, how are you going to run with the horses? Yeah. And God just has these amazing things and places He wants us to to, to walk in and live in. And He wants us to be done with the, the junk in our lives and uh, relationships and the junk in our lives. And we're just, we're doing the basic things of the scripture, the Walking milk up. of the word, He calls it. He wants us to be done with even the things in our body. Sickness and disease should not have any more place in our body. No, it's a curse. And the more your soul gets in line with him. And like we read in John 15 is dressed by the husbandman, dressed by the vine dresser, mm -hmm. pruned by the one that loves us. So you bear fruit. The more you bear fruit. So the more all these things come into place, the easier it is to get healed. Because, you know, you have to choose to believe His Word. It's His will that we live healed. And when your chooser's damaged, it makes it hard. It really becomes a struggle instead of just some easily trusting in God. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to get healed. Yes, and stay healed. And we're going to, before we, I show you what the Lord showed me. All these things are just things that He's walked me through and I almost want to help you walk through them too because it's just wonderful to be free and it's wonderful for your soul to be in the process of being cleaned out. Hallelujah. And He loves us so much. Amen. So let's look in the Word at Deuteronomy 30. You stay, I think I asked you, yeah, your Amplified's turned to something else, but in, in our new living, we're going to look at Deuteronomy 30. And he tells us the command he's giving us or them he was giving, but it still is true for us today. It's not too difficult to understand. It's not beyond your reach. The things of Christ God are not hard. No. It's not kept in heaven. It's, it's not kept so far away that you have to ask for somebody to go bring it to you. <laughs> it says the message, verse 14, is very close at hand. It's on your lips and in your heart so you can obey it. Mm -hmm. He says, today, now listen, verse 15. Today I'm giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity yes, and disaster. Amen. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God, to keep His commandments, decrees, and regulations by walking in His ways. That's what we've been talking so about. So that's the result of that is comes from love. Mm -hmm. If you do this... You will live, live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are about to enter and occupy. We will say that is behind door number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other choice in door number two. But, if, but your heart, if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, look at that heart turning away, my, my, my. mom, and apply that to what we've talked to about letting Jesus into your yeah. soul. It's a decision you make. Letting Him into those places that you want to hide, the hurts, the toxic thinking, the misunderstandings, the relationship hurts, the any kind of hurt, unforgiveness, letting Him in those places. 
that's refusing and your heart turning away. Mm -hmm. If you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. He doesn't want that. He's provided no. another way, no. but it's our choice. Not his will. You will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. That's pretty plain, isn't it? Very Kelly? plain. He has a good place for us. He has this amazing life plan for us. You choose his place. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessing and curses. Mm -hmm. Now, I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, committing yourself firmly to Him. Listen to this. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is this life part. Do you realize, Mom, he took twice as long to describe life as he did to describe the death part of it? Because he expects us to walk in this life. He expects us to choose that. And people might say, well, I don't know how to choose that. Well, we've been talking the last two weeks about it. But what, and people can say, well, I want that. I believe that. But then if you have damaged, if your soul is damaged, then your chooser's damaged. Yeah, that's right. Mom, did you know that I was, I was reading some things this last week and um, my question is, do you have a healthy chooser? That's good. Do you know that things can damage even your brain. I mean, you, we've had enough from Caroline Leaf to know where toxic, toxic thinking, thinking, things you put in there that you're not meant to have in there, yeah. um, strife, unforgiveness. division, unforgiveness, damages your brain. You know, I was reading the other day about what pornography, I'm going to use that as an example just because it's such, it's so, such a clear example of how the damage can come to your brain. Did you know that when people look at pornography, um, it releases dopamine mm -hmm. into your body. I'm not a scientist, but I play one on TV. No, I'm just kidding. I, I know some. You've read some. I've read some. <laughs> um, but it doesn't take too much brilliance to just say that makes sense. But when it releases that dopamine, it feels good. So then, but it releases such a high degree of that that your body has to, your mind has to dull its receptors because it's too much. And so when that damage occurs to your receptors, then normal living that would normally make people happy and, and mm. feel good, it's not enough. So that's why people who get addicted to something yeah. like pornography or whatever it might be, they have to have more and more and more of that to be happy. Just like drugs. Just like drugs. Mm -hmm. And so that damage, and then, and then whatever it is that has damaged your brain, whether it's unforgiveness or any of that, those things drive you. See, your soul is your driver. We talked about that last week. You wouldn't get in a car that had a chauffeur and not tell the chauffeur where to take you. But if you don't, then the chauffeur's gonna take you wherever the chauffeur wants to take you. And that's our soul. So if you get in, if your soul, you let your emotions lead you, then your emotions will take you all over the map and it will never be happy. There are people whose minds have been damaged by their emotions and they like the feeling they get when they're emotional. So they'll always find something. They will lead themselves to things that will cause them to be emotional. Why? Because they like that feeling that they get when they're emotional. And then it requires more and more and more and more. There are people who, uh, even I think it's easy for young girls to get caught up in this, to be very dramatic. And then uh, people give you attention. And that attention, you become hungry for that. And so your emotions will drive you to make decisions that will get you attention. Well, that, that can turn into all kinds bad of news. hurt. Yeah. That can turn into just, yeah, as you say, bad news. So in this, but, so our life, the Bible said there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is destruction. Our soul will think that's the right way because it's not been 
renewed. You've not let the Holy Spirit shine the light of correction and direction on your soul, letting, letting him in to those places, inviting him in. So your soul will drive your life over here towards death. And your chooser will choose things that lead towards death. But on the other hand, our soul, our brains are made to change. Yeah. Our minds are made to be able to change. Our to will, choose. our emotions are made to be able to operate on the things of God. So when your mind may be full of junk, but as soon as you give it to the Lord, He'll oh, begin I'm gently so unfolding things to you. It's not even that you have to go yeah. hunt for things, Mom. No. He'll just unfold it as it needs to unfold and just you'll feel freer and freer and happier and happier. And as your mind changes and your soul changes, it will drive you in the right direction. It will, it, your your you'll make decisions that are right in your will. You'll put the right things in your mind. He'll help you remove things out of your mind that need to come out. Um, he will, your emotions then won't be driving the car. Your That's emotions right. will line up with God's word. You know what I have found? I have found this place like, you know, I talked last week about, week about this place of worship that the Lord has had me in. It's just, I love to worship Him. And when I worship, my emotions get so involved. There's this one song that I sing sometimes that says, you know, and when this life is over and I stand before His throne, there's nothing that I will have wanted but to be with the one I love. And my, every time I even say it, my emotions just, I love Praise Him. God. But it's Amen. not in a bad way, it's in a good way. Your emotions are a gift that you feel feel and you are love people and you can be passionate, but given to God, they're a blessing. And so when your chooser gets healthy, your chooser can you choose drive. Life. You choose yes. Life. And yeah. it can, it can command your brain. It can command your life. Your chooser will direct you in the path of God Amen. instead of that other way. Amen. Uh, listen to this. Listen to this verse. This is Proverbs 22. Mom, you're going to want me to give you this piece of paper because you're going to like this. This is in the Amplified. Okay. It says, listen, consent and submit. So if you're not consenting and submitting, you're not listening <laughs> to the words of the wise. Apply your mind to my knowledge. This, this frees us. This, this is how the word washes us. Apply your mind. You have to choose with your will to do it. Apply your mind to my knowledge. Mm, that makes all For, the difference. It does. For it will be pleasant if you keep them in your mind. And the New Testament says renew your mind. Yeah. And it says Same it thing. will be, it says believing them. That's how you keep them in your mind is you choose. Yeah. I believe that. That's so right. once you believe it, you've grabbed it. You take it. And you take it and you put it. This is now functioning in the right direction for your mind. Goes in your eyes, in your ears, gets down in your heart and comes back out your mouth. Well, that's what it says. And delivers you. And listen to how it says it. When you begin to do this, Mom, first you apply your mind. Yeah. Then you decide to believe it. Yes, you take it. Then it says your lips will become accustomed to confessing you them. You say it. So, it, you know, when you first started and saying. You have it. When you first started saying, by his traps I'm healed, you may have felt a little uncomfortable because you're like, it, you know, my body's not healed, but I'm going to believe this. And you start saying it we might not be as comfortable. But boy, you get to where... We don't that's, choose by our body. Our body no, doesn't have any sense. You become itself. a comfortable <laughs> saying his word. Yes. And right. saying that his you word is the true. word like medicine. The scripture then it says. says, the next thing that happens is your trust your belief, your reliance, your support and confidence may be in the Lord. Amen. And I love this because this is what I want you to begin to expect in your life. I have made known these things to you today, even to you. So no matter who you are, he says, I've made known these things to you today. Whatever you need, if you'll Praise ask God. him in, ask him to do this process too, then he says, I'll make known, I've made known to you these things. And he says, I love it how he says, even to you. So if you're the one that says, well, I don't know Nobody's about me. There's nobody left out. Here, you can have that. I knew you'd want that. Um, there's nobody left out. 
Now, are y'all ready for some miracles? Absolutely. I want to read to you something that Rick Renner said. There's a verse in Matthew 27. It says, when Jesus died on the cross, when he was hanging on the cross, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. This says, when Jesus arrived in, at Golgotha, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. According to Jewish law, if a man was ex about to be executed, that he could a request a narcotic. That's mm -hmm. what that was. Um, mingled with wine. And it would, it was a special painkiller. This is Rick Renner's from his Sparkling Gems. It was a special painkiller um, that would uh, alleviate and anesthetize the pain. Um, so it says there was a group of women in Jerusalem who made it their good deed to help people with this. And they would do this homemade painkiller. And this says Jesus was offered this anesthetic twice, once before crucifixion and once while he was dying on the oh, cross. Jesus. In both instances, listen, Jesus has done it all for us That's to the right. last degree. In both instances, he turned it down and refused to drink it, for he knew that he was to fully consume the cup that the Father had given him to drink. And then it says he was crucified. He bore it for us. And then it says that he was, this is good too, um, this, this crucified describes an upright pointed stake used for the punishment of criminals, and it was described those who were hung up, impaled, beheaded, and then publicly displayed. It was always used in connection with public execution. Mm -hmm. And the point of it was to bring further humiliation and additional point punishment to the accused. Now, this is what I took for me and I want you to take for you. I said, Kelly, this is me talking to me. <laughs> he has taken on purpose all pain, That's right. all hurt, all shame and humiliation to give me all grace. That's right. All grace. Praise God. He oh. chose to not be he dull will. in any way to the pain, so I choose to not be dull right. to His grace. He redeemed us from the curse by becoming a curse for us, he, by bearing the curse. He did it Even all. Even though he was totally innocent, he did it on our behalf. And you know, we know this. He Many of us have sinned. known this. And, and I, the Lord the other day, this is how when I said he would make things known to you. Um, this is the last thing I want to tell you in these two weeks. Um, but I want it to be so real to you. And I believe you're going to have miracles in your body instantaneously. Yeah. You, um, I was... I had had some sciatic pain and it was so painful. Mom, you know, it was painful. And I, I, I've had some, you know, over the last couple of years and the last year could have been really difficult for me. But I really got to the place last year that I really did after dad told me I was carrying the care, I went home and got it off. It. I okay. dumped it. That's right. And so he's been really helping me. Right, but so. um, this just in the last, this last, this since January, I just had some pain in the sciatic. Well, I was believing God and standing, standing. Then I had a good day on a Monday, with no pain or less pain. Tuesday, no pain. Wednesday woke up, no pain in that sciatic whatsoever. But I woke up on Wednesday with the worst crick in my neck I've ever had. I'm like, that's not okay. I've had all this pain. Now it's gone. Now I got a crick in my neck. And I just, that morning I said, that is not okay. And I, I thought about some of the, the, I believe the Lord led me to say this. I said, body, it is not okay for you to tell me to hurt. No, I said mind. It's not okay for you to tell me to hurt. We're fine, soul. We're fine. We're not hurting. We Praise are healed God. and whole. God is helping us. And as soon as I said that, Mom, I heard this, bless the Lord on my soul. And later in the day, or I think I did it right then, I said, bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. And that pain eased up a little bit. Well, later in the day, I was driving home 
And I'm driving in traffic and my neck was like this. I had about an hour drive and my neck was cricked over and 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 that I was thinking about that. I thought again, it's not okay for my mind to tell my body to hurt. And I said, bless the Lord on my soul. And I'm telling you, when the Lord said that to me, I got it. I thought, wait, that's not just a good confession in Psalm 103. That is the psalmist telling his soul to bless the Lord, mm -hmm. telling his yeah, soul to remember the benefits. And so that day I'm driving, I said, that, then that came up in me, Rem forget not all of his benefits. And I'm like, oh, you will remember his benefits, mind, will, emotions, because yeah, a lot right. of pain is emotionally driven and the, the sensing of pain is in your, mind, in your brain. It's not here, it's in your brain. And so I, I started saying that. The second I said that, my neck straightened up and I could turn it all the way over. Nice. And in a little bit, it locked up again, but not as far over. And I, I did it again and I could turn it all the way over. It happened several times that day. By the end of the day, that was gone. And every time I said it, mom, it was instantaneous. And even now, when I have some pain or something, I can say this. I went back and I read Psalm 103. Mom, there's not anything that could be lurking from like we've been talking about, lurking in your soul, whether it's how people have treated you, how um, you know, you've know you sinned and you can't forget about the past or forgive people yeah, or yeah. it's all covered here. Sickness, oh disease, there's nothing in your life today that's not covered here, but you need to tell your soul to bless the Lord yeah. and remember what He's done with you, for you. So I'm gonna, this is the last thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna read through it. Okay. And you're gonna get healed. I want you to read through it with me. Go find your Bible. So read this with me. You can do it with me, Mom, here. Okay. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, mind, will, emotions, you will remember His benefits. That's right who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, Lord, all, who redeems all. thy life mm -hmm. from destruction. He's redeeming your Praise life from God. destruction. That's accidents, storms, anything. Anything. People hurt, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is yes, renewed like, like the that. eagles. The people have soul issues where their eating is concerned. There it is. Glory the Lord, God. I love this, executes righteousness and judgment for all that are, are oppressed. I'm going to add a little something here. You know, just the way he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel who were oppressed, he was executing righteousness and judgment and he is executing righteousness and judgment for me. So Praise God. he is making known his ways and his acts to me. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will He keep His anger forever. He had not dealt with us after our sins, oh, nor you, rewarded Jesus. us according to our iniquities. Hallelujah. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath He removed our transgressions Praise from God. us. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. He knows our frame. He remembers that we're dust. He knows you're human. As for man, his days are as grass. Listen, today is like grass. As a flower of the field, it flourishes. It's temporary. But the wind passes over it and it's gone. It says that the place thereof shall know it no more. Hallelujah. The wind, the wind of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear Him and His righteousness to children's children. Quit worrying yes. about your kids. Right. To such as keep His covenant and to those that remember His commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared His throne in the heavens and His kingdom rules Praise over all. Praise God. Bless the Lord, ye His Bless angels. The now Lord you're going to tell the angels places. that Hallelujah. excel in strength, do His commandments, Praise hearkening God. to the voice of His word. Bless the Lord, all His hosts, ye ministers of His that do His pleasure. Yeah. Bless the Lord, all His works and all the places of dominion. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Kelly and I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed this teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes.